Okay, so now we're going to move on to uh, kind of the next slightly more complicated step, and that's going to be taking existing shaders and mixing them together um, for more advanced results. So I've started, I have uh, three shader balls here. I've got a metallic purple. I have a less shiny but still metallic uh, chrome. And then I've got uh, a shader ball that has no uh, shader assigned to it yet, which is uh, where we're going to start. So I'm going to select that whole group, right click and assign new material. Uh, but this time, instead of selecting the standard surface, I'm going to select the mix shader. Okay. And what that does, if we look in our attribute editor, um, the mix shader has a couple of inputs uh, to it. It's got a shader one and a shader two. Right? It's going to take two shaders and mix them together in some way that we define. Okay, so by default, it doesn't give us anything because there's no shaders there. I'm also going to just render that section. Um, so I'm going to go to the hypershade. And we have, in the hypershade, we've primarily only dealt with the material viewer and property editor. Um, but we're going to address a couple more areas of this now. Uh, so we have our materials all listed out here, and we've actually got materials and textures and whatever lights are in the scene show up here. Um, but we're just going to worry about materials. We can adjust the size of the uh, preview tiles. So you can go enormous if you really want to for whatever reason. But um, So we've got our mix shader node right here. I'm going to rename it. Uh, mix, or maybe I'll actually do metal mix. Okay. And then uh, we have, uh, we need to input our two shaders. So I'm going to right click on, on the node and say graph network so we can see this is all it is. It's a, mi it's a mix node and then the output, which is what this SG node is. Um, the way we add shaders to this, now I'm going to try it the way that it's supposed to work. Um, and if it doesn't work, I'll show you another way to do it. But the way it's supposed to work is you can just middle click and drag materials from up here. So we got our painted metal. I'm going to drop it right here in the shader one spot. And then bare metal. I'm going to drop it in the shader two spot. And now it worked. Okay. So before I was dragging into the empty field and this time I dragged onto the shader one word. Maybe that made a difference. I don't know. Um, now if I graph the network, you can see I've got the two shaders mixing into my metal mix shader node and that goes to the output. In the render view it looks like this which is kind of what you would expect I guess if you mix two materials is it just an even um, amalgamation of the two right? So the purple is less intense and the silver starts to come through and it's actually if we look at our hypershade it is a 50-50 mix right? It's 0.5 on the mix weight so that's the amount of mix that we're doing, so we can bring that down to like 0.1, and that's going to be mostly purple. And I can bring that up to 0.9, and that's going to be mostly silver with just a little bit of purple in it, and anywhere in between. Okay. Now, you can also add them together, which is going to tend to make things brighter. Um, but you can do a lot more than just that. Um, and the way that you kind of take this a step further is by adding a texture to the mix weight node. So instead of just averaging them together or adding them together, um, we can actually tell Maya which parts of that material we want to be one versus the other shader. So I'm going to click on the texture icon and we'll start with just a checker pattern because that's the really obvious um, view. All right? So it's just we have some parts of this that are black, and we have some parts that are white on the checker pattern, and uh, the parts that are white are getting the purple color, and the parts that are black are getting the chrome color. Right? But, um, you know, that's rarely is, is our materials that so obviously divided, uh, unless you're actually making a checkerboard or chess board. Uh, let's go with something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go back to my mix node. 
and uh, you can see in the graph network here, we've got our checker pattern. So I'm just going to select those two nodes and delete them. I don't want them. Go back to the mix node and let's add a noise texture. Okay, so I add that and now we can look at the pattern. Now it's looking kind of like marble, so we need to adjust this noise pattern a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to stop this render view. Let's close that and we'll see if we can just refer to it in the material viewer here. Um, so with the noise node selected, we can adjust kind of the threshold for the noise, amplitude, let's go with, actually, you know what, let's not use this noise texture because it's boring. Uh, let's actually bring in an image texture. Okay, so I found this image texture. It's white rough plaster. And I'm just going to use this um, as the mix. I'm not going to use the color. Uh, I'm not even going to apply this to the bump, at least not right away. Um, but I want to also kind of walk you through how I'm going to get this ready for Maya. Because um, a little practice is always good. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this into my source images folder. Uh, so that it's stored in the right place and it's in the project. Next thing is I'm going to open this whoops, open this in Photoshop. And what I want to do in Photoshop is uh, make this a, a more defined mixed node. So I'm going to increase the contrast uh, so we get something a little bit more extreme. So I'm just going to, uh, well first I'm going to duplicate the layer out of habit just so I have a backup if I, in case I do anything destructive to this. Uh, and go to adjustments and uh, we'll go curves and I'm just going to increase the contrast here let's actually bring this all the way over uh, I'm also going to add a channel mixer and choose a uh, black and white preset there we go. So let's start with something like that and we can make adjustments as we go. So I'm going to quickly export this out. It says PNG works. Click save. And we will just call this Metal Mix 1. And make sure we save it in the right location. So again, going back to my project, source images, save. As soon as that saves, I can jump back over into Maya, go to my Metal Mix material, click on the texture icon, choose a file texture, and navigate to my Metal Mix 01 texture. Click Open, and let's see what that looks like. and it doesn't look good at all. Ah, because it's connecting the out alpha and not the out color. So I'm going to, in the node viewer, right, you see the out alpha, which is the transparency of the file, is what's determining it. So I want to disconnect that and instead drag the out color into the mix node. Come on, try that again. It doesn't want to do that. Okay, I'm just going to grab the red channel. And now let's take a look. There we go, that's better. Uh, but it is the other way around. I actually want this to be mostly purple with some silver shining through. So, jump into Photoshop. And I want that contrast to be more, exci more extreme. I'm going to actually get rid of the curves and do our levels and just crank up that contrast. Something, something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to select that bottom layer and hit uh, Command-I to invert it. 
And maybe I'll back off those levels just a little bit. Oh, something like that. Alright. Then I will save that again. Click save, and I'll just save over the other one. Replace. And then I jump back into Maya. And just reload that file. There we go. That's better. Okay, there we go. So now we have our purple paint is more dominant, uh, and the silver is shining through underneath. Now, I'd like to just have these materials be even more different. So I'm going to select the bare metal and just increase the roughness, make it a little darker make it more obvious that there's two different materials there. All right, but that's how you can layer things. And it doesn't have to be two of the same material. It doesn't have to be just like paint wearing off. It could be, um, you know, maybe you have paint and um, on top of wood, or you have plaster crumbling from a brick wall. The same thing applies. You can create one shader for your plaster, one shader for your brick wall, layer them together, and create the, um, the texture that's going to define where the plaster has crumbled off, and you just see the the brick wall, uh, and it can look really nice that way. Now, if I couple this with um, a bump map, so now if I go into my geometry and bump mapping, and I'll grab that same file, uh, let me grab file. Metal mix. Okay. Now, by default, this is going to be super extreme. So, we'll almost certainly have to back this off. And it's actually got the metal bits coming out, so we need to even reverse that. Okay, you can see how it looks like the metal's bumping out. So, we will come in here, and in our bump 2D node, I'm going to set the bump depth to, let's go with like negative 0.2. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, now that's starting to feel better. Okay, now you'll, you'll also notice that this is applying that bump texture to the um, this material over here, the one of the source materials. So you can't really use that as um, as like a finished material. It's just a component of this one. If you wanted another material to have just the regular metal, you'd probably want to duplicate that shader and make it its own thing. Um, but let me turn that off so we can get a better look at this. Okay. So you can see, and actually on the other one, you can see the, the bump a little bit better. Um, you can see what that's doing, and, and that coupled with the mix shader is really giving the surface some character. You can, you can then also take this and then stack this with another mix node. If on top of it you want to put maybe some like spray paint or something, um, or you know, if it's outside and it's been in the sun, maybe, um, you know, you wear it down further. Maybe there's another layer of deterioration underneath. You know, you've got plenty of options.